99% of people just um, you know, look just for a moment. So it's like with any advertising, we want to give that moment like as much, you know, emphasis as we can. Hey fellow animal respecters, welcome to another video. For those of you who may have missed it, I recently did a live stream with Dan Shepard, who some of you may know from the TV series Veganville. We covered loads of crucial topics, everything from effective animal advocacy to navigating conflicting ideas within the movement. Be sure to watch till the end for some hilarious bloopers. A massive thank you to Dan for having me on his channel. If you haven't already, be sure to check him out at Grumpy Vegan Granddad and subscribe to his YouTube channel so that you can follow the inspiring animal advocacy work that he does. While you're over on Dan's channel, you may also want to watch our full chat so you can hear the context surrounding these points as this video will be a rapid fire highlight reel. With that, let's get into it. Of the works, but I've just gotten out on the street the last um, two weeks. I, I've been out there a couple times. And I have brand new footage that's a um, super high impact, just like 10 seconds of um, egg footage um, of, of the, uh, the sons who were killed and murdered through, you know, I think we all kind of know that footage as animal advocates and it just loops it. So, because the thing I've noticed is so many people walk by, and I know you've probably seen this, Dan, is, you know, you doing street outreach. Oftentimes, you know, 99% of people just, um, you know, look just for a moment. So it's like with any advertising we want to give that moment like as much you know emphasis as we can you know mindfully so yep. but we, we all need to be first in the law because everybody can come stuck in this quagmire of, of of legislation that that police seem to think that we're unaware of the law and the police are even more unaware of the law than we are i mean i've come across it a lot because of photography um i mean i don't know whether you you go out with a camera but you go out with a camera sometimes especially dslrs and people see this big camera and they instantly get on the back foot and they think that it's an offense, but it's not. And yeah, mm. yeah. So That's actually, it's, it. it's a bit of a, um, it's one of those projects I've just kind of, you know, I've been doing a lot of animal videos that I've been prioritizing, but it's something I'm super keen to, to do a video about because it's actually a couple of years old now, but I had several interactions with a local event here in Brighton and they basically tried to remove me over the course of several weeks. And that really taught me to do my homework. Um, I called the council. I confirmed that I had right to that space. I print, so I've actually got my outreach bag here. I mean, I printed out all, like the, the, I can link some of this stuff, but like the, my big talking point is, you know, Article 11 of the Human Rights Act is the right to protest. I think that's probably the strongest piece of evidence we have. Um, uh, so I really, for those of you who are you're gonna check out my channel, um, hopefully I'll, I'll get that out here soon because I, I just want to have a really concise resource because as animal advocates, we just have to think about so many different things and it'd be great to be like, here's here's what you need to go on the street. And because the thing is people will abuse power they don't even have. Um, and, and yeah, they'll, they'll try to get us removed because they want to make the public happy that doesn't want us there. So if they can tell us something, you know, they'll, they'll get us to move on. I don't think they care that much if it's actually enforceable or not. The other, the other two things, just while we're on the topic, the there's, and, and some of this is country dependent. This is one that would be speak to what you're talking about. It's just like literally photographer's rights. I mean, you have this, you don't have to memorize this stuff, just print it out. And if, you know, oftentimes somebody comes over and they're like, I'm calling the police if you don't go. And it's like, all right, fine. And then you've got a chance to get your paperwork in order before they approach you often. But and in, in, in just the basics, I mean, that's the key thing, like you said, about like serious public order. So there is some subjective nature to this stuff. But I think we've just got to hold our ground, you know, and, and there's different things that I think can be done with the footage, too. I have various footage that some of it is cl quite clearly not distressing. So it's like I could always switch to that if I really needed to. Um, and I'd probably be quite resistant to. Um, but they should never move you on, really, unless, I mean, there's threats of violence like or something like that you were saying earlier. Yeah, parents. yeah. But, but but it brings up another point that we actually want the the. I mean, this is a whole other topic. But I focus more on our fellow animals' individuality, which I think you can do with, while it's still upsetting. But I I show them at their end in the the best way possible to try to carve out that you know any 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 um implication that we can improve the way they're treated versus ending their breeding use and murder altogether. So I think when we do that, the, the, the police wouldn't have a, length, a, a, a ground to stand on. Subtle differences. So, and, and that's exactly it. Like, I mean, I think a lot of times this language is, it's, 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 but yeah, it's intended to provide clarity, but actually it could be confusing the message. So I think that's exactly it is like any language, it's great to call out like, hey, what is this? Cause 
otherwise we're just gonna you know we're, we're gonna yeah, miss I each think, other. like language is such, such a complex thing because even when we both think we have like, an understanding of a word you know like the, the recent video series I've been doing, there was a, a so-called hunter talking about how they love and respect the, the innocent individuals who they're murdering. So, I mean, if you're having a conversation with someone like this, like first it's like the definition of terms, like how do you define love and respect? Because all of a sudden these words are being chucked about and we're, you know, my version of love and respect is, are two very different things that, than theirs. So You've got to be sort of in circles where you use certain words if you if i mean i drive trucks all day on my own and i go in somewhere and i never use this sort of language i'm not in these circles where certain words are used yeah, i mean I, like you said like the um we, we're we kind of form a lot of these bubbles and i think the great thing about these live streams is we can kind of break out of them a little bit so we can kind of learn from each other um, because otherwise i do think it's very um limiting to, to just kind of stay within the same circle and use the same language and not really break out of that if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you can be <laughs> notified when the other clips are released. I also have some other upcoming videos I'm super excited to share with you. Thanks for watching and let's keep evolving our language to build respect for our fellow animals and I'll see you in the next video. Pick their interest. Let's say a bodybuilder comes up and he's a big tough macho bodybuilder. He's bought into this this sort of yeah, eat meat, men barbecue, all this cavemen, cavemen eat meat, strong fire, all this bullshit. It's me. I've got, I've got sexy music on. It's me alarm, and for some reason I said it was like it, I think it's a Roger Yates alarm. So it, yeah. <laughs> For free resources, such as a discussion guide and language document, check out veganinteractions.com. Thanks for watching.